Hello everyone, I welcome you all to the lecture 20 of this course construction methods and uh, equipment management. In today's lecture, we are going to discuss about the concreting equipments. So, in the last lecture, we have discussed about the um, tower cranes and about the factors which affects the lifting capacity of the cranes. So, let us look into the outline of today's presentation. In today's presentation, we are going to discuss about the basic steps involved in the um, production of concrete. Okay? And um, we will be discussing in detail about the different types of concrete mixer machines and we will be discussing operation of the ready mix batching plant. So, in this lecture, I am not going to discuss much about the concrete. I assume that we might have been exposed to um, the concrete in any other material related course. So, we will be directly discussing um, the more about the, um, the concreting equipment. Okay, but basically, as everyone knows, concrete is a composite material. Okay, it is made up of um, the different ingredients like cement, aggregate and water. Okay, so, other than these conventional ingredients, nowadays we use um, the modern admixtures also, chemical based admixtures, mineral based admixtures. So, in order to improve the performance of concrete in terms of strength, workability and durability, uh, using different types of admixtures also nowadays. Okay. So, now let us look into the, um, the what are all the basic steps involved in the production of concrete. So, the first thing is uh, to produce a concrete, we need to know the uh, mix proportions. So, we need to do the concrete mix design or mix proportioning. Okay. So, to know how much quantity of cement, aggregate and water to be added uh, for uh, making a concrete of desired strength, workability and durability. Okay. So, there are standard um, the mixed design guidelines uh, which vary from country to country like for in India we have this Indian standard guidelines, Okay, we have the IS code, um, the guidelines for that and similarly we have the ACI guidelines that is American Concrete Institute guidelines and we also have the British standard guidelines. Okay. So, we can follow the standard guidelines and do the mixed proportioning of the concrete to get your desired strength, workability and the durability. Okay. So, once the mixed design is done, the next step will be the batching. You have to measure the ingredients okay, that is what is batching, then mix it. Okay. So, we can use the mixer machines to mix the concrete and after mixing, you transport it to the required place where you need to do the concreting work or where you need to cast your concrete. Okay, then place it, then consolidate it. Okay, consolidating is nothing but commonly adopted vibration methods to eliminate the entrapped air. So, whatever air which was entrapped during the mixing of concrete can be um, the removed by the consolidation process. Then finally, you finish it to the required texture according to your requirement. Okay, then the last step will be the curing of the concrete to facilitate the continued hydration of the concrete so that we can attain the desired strength. Okay. So, these are the basic steps involved in the production of the concrete. We are going to discuss all these steps one by one in detail in the upcoming slides. So, um, one important thing to be noted is that the, uh, the production process has a significant influence on the quality of your concrete. So, generally we assess the quality of the concrete or assess the performance of the concrete in terms of its strength, workability and the durability. Okay. So, concrete performance is assessed through its strength, workability and durability. So, you can get your desired performance provided your concrete has a desired um, the microstructure. Okay? So, all the strength, durability, everything depends upon the microstructure of the concrete. To get the desired microstructure, we need to have a good control in the, um, the um, quality control in the production process, right, right from the mix design. Okay? Because your uh, microstructure will depend upon the mix composition, how much quantity of aggregates and how much quantity of cement, everything is going to decide the microstructure of your concrete. Okay? So, starting from the mix design, we should have a strict control in the, um, the quality. Okay? So, and also um, how you mix the concrete, we should mix in such a way that you get a homogeneous mix, so that there is a uniform coating of paste around the aggregate that will result in a good microstructure. Similarly, you need to consolidate the concrete so that all the unwanted um, entrapped air voids are removed, okay? so that we can get a good microstructure. So, your microstructure is going to be determined by the composition and the production process of the concrete. That is why you need to exercise a good quality control in the production procedure of the concrete. So, let us start with the, um, the first step like uh, once you do the mix design, once you know the mix proportions, um, so you need to uh, first batch, do the batching of the material. Batching is nothing but measurement of your quantity of material. This you can either do it on volumetric basis or you can do it on weight basis. Very commonly you can see that in the, um, the project sites, people you, um, the prefer volumetric basis only because it is very convenient to them to measure on basis of volume. See, they use this, um, the gauge boxes. These gauge boxes are standard wooden boxes or steel boxes. Volume of one gauge box equal to volume of one bag of cement. 
Okay. So, they use this for the measurement of the, um, the ingredients of the concrete. Okay. But one thing to be noted is the volume batching is less accurate when compared to the wave batching. Say for example, the sand which we are going to use um, for concrete making is wet. Okay. So, you are going to measure the wet sand using this gauge box. Okay. So, you know that sand will bulk um, uh, when its moisture content increases. Okay. So, depending upon the fineness of the sand, more finer the sand, it will bulk more. Okay. So, due to bulking, it volume appears more, but the actual weight will be less. Okay. So, if you are going to measure the, um, the sand using this gauge box, so what will happen? You are going to, um, your mix will become under sanded, because the volume may appear right, but the actual weight will be less. Okay. Because your sand is wet. Okay. So, that is why it results in uh, inaccurate measurement and uh, um, your, the mix composition of the concrete gets affected. Your mix becomes under sanded. When the mix becomes under sanded, what will happen? It will become less cohesive and that may result in segregation of your concrete. Okay. So, all these things affect the microstructure of the concrete strength and the durability of your concrete. Okay. So, that is why volume batching is less accurate. To get a good quality of concrete, we should always go for wave batching. Okay. So, the batching plans, if you see, always the weighing is done. Um, the batching of the material is done on the weight basis. Okay. So, depending upon the uh, batching plan, in some batching plans, we have fully automated system. You just need to enter the weight of the material, weight of cement, weight of aggregate, then the uh, exact quantity of the cement will be uh, discharged from the cement silos conveyed by the bell conveyor into the, um, the mixer machine. Similarly, the exact quantity of the aggregate will be released from the aggregate uh, storage bins and it will be conveyed by the conveyor and carried to the mixer machine directly. So, we have fully automated um, the batch systems available, weighing batch systems available in the modern uh, RMC batching plan. So, there are different types of weigh batching, fully automatic or semi-automatic or manual. Okay. So, different types of batching systems are there. But one thing you have to always keep in mind that uh, weigh batching is always accurate when compared to the volume batching. So, it is always preferable to go for weigh batching to get a good quality of concrete. So, next is about the job batched concrete versus central batched concrete. Okay. So, the basic difference is job batched means you are going to prepare the concrete at your job site. Okay. Central batched concrete means your concrete will be prepared in the batching plant. Okay. It will be prepared in the batching plant and it will be brought to the job site in an RMC transit mixer. Okay. So, that is the basic difference between job batched concrete and central batched concrete. Okay. So, when do we generally go for job batched concrete? How do you make the decision to go for whether job batched or central batched? Okay, it mainly depends upon the location of your project site. If your job site is located in a very remote place where it would be very difficult for the RMC transit mixer to uh, deliver the concrete within the stipulated time, then in that case you have to go for only job batched concrete. So, it depends upon the location of your job site. Similarly, um, sometimes you can see that um, the your job site may be located in a um, the traffic congested place. In that place also due to traffic delays, it may not be possible for the transit mixer to deliver your concrete within the stipulated time. So, in that case also you have to go for only um, the job batched concrete. Okay. So, the decision of going for job batch or central batch mainly depends upon the distance between your job site and the batching plant. Okay. And another important thing is your rate of construction. Okay. So, um, the how much quantity of concrete you need per hour or per day, okay, the production rate of concrete needed, that also decides the uh, selection of job batching or central batching. If you need huge quantity of concrete every day, the um, rate of construction is uh, very high okay, and the production rate of concrete needed is very high. In that case, it is always advisable to have your own um, the batching plant at your site and make the concrete because when you need huge volume of concrete on a daily basis. Okay. So, it's, it, it may not be possible for the RMC batching plant to deliver to you on a continuous basis because they may be having so many customers. Okay. So, there is no assurance that you will be receiving the concrete on a continuous basis from the RMC factory. So, if your uh, production rate of concrete, if the requirement of concrete volume needed is more, then it is advisable to have your own batching plant at your site and produce a concrete that will be even more economical also. Then on cost basis, obviously, when compared to job batch, um, the central batch the, uh, concrete is going to be costlier. 
it is manufactured in the factory under strict quality control. Okay. So, the quality of concrete is also good when you get it from this factory central batching plant and also at the same time it is going to be costlier when compared to the job based concrete. Okay. So, um, the economy, the budget, your project budget will also decide uh, whether to go for job batched or central batched. Okay. So, based on all these factors we have to make a decision whether to go for job batched or central batched concrete. Then about the mixing of concrete. Okay. So, first is uh, we discussed about the batching. Okay, then we move on to mixing. So, mixing of concrete, okay, you have to spend more um, um, efforts to have a homogeneous mixing of concrete. Okay. So, you should be very careful about the uh, mixing of concrete because um, th we should ensure that we get a homogeneous mix, then only you can have a good microstructure of your concrete. As I told you, um, th you need to have a good coating of paste around the aggregate. Okay. So, for that you need to ensure a homogeneous mixing. Okay. So, in some cases you can see that people even mix the concrete with hand for unimportant works. Okay. But, you can see that the uh, quality of concrete will be poor in that case. So, it is always preferable to go for um, the machine mixing okay, to get a homogeneous mix. Okay. So, there are different types of concrete mixer machines nowadays available in the market. Um, the based upon the method of mixing, there is a mechanism of mixing, you can broadly classify them into two categories. One is a free fall mixer, other one is your power mixer. Okay. So, in free fall, the mixer also you have is subdivided into two categories um, to based upon the discharging of concrete like tilting and non-tilting type okay. and power mixer depending upon the shape and the, uh, of the drum. Um, the you can classify it into pan mixer and um, trough mixer. Okay. So, we are going to discuss all these types one by one. Okay. The first is about the free fall mixer. Okay. So, the conventional drum mixers what we see in your uh, job site very commonly is your uh, is based on free fall mechanism. As the name indicates the concrete here we are going to discuss based on free fall mechanism of the material. That means, you can see the inside view of the drum you are having fixed uh, blades, okay? blades fixed to the ins uh, inside of the drum. You can see clearly in the picture, okay? you can see the blades. Okay? So, these blades when the drum is rotating, it will help you to lift the material and drop the material at the end of the rotation. Okay? So, by lifting and dropping the material, your uh, material gets mixed thoroughly. Okay? That is what is happening. That is why it is called as free fall mixer. Okay? So, basically your blades are um, th um, th lifting the material when the drum is rotated and allow it to fall at the end of the rotation. Okay? So, it keeps lifting and dropping. Okay? So, the rotating drum has fixed blades inside it, it makes the material by lifting and dropping it. Okay? So, that is why um, basically this um, the mixer machine, okay, you should have some desired consistency of the concrete to facilitate the free fall mechanism. If the mix is very stiff or very cohesive, in that case, um, this mixer machine won't be compatible. Okay, so the free fall won't be possible with a very stiff mix. Okay, so we need a slump of at least 50 mm to have the free fall mechanism. Okay, suited for concrete usually with 50 mm slump. So minimum uh, 50 mm slump is needed to facilitate the free fall mechanism. So also um, this drum should not be rotated at a very high speed. Okay, the commonly adopted speed is 18 to 20 rpm. Okay. So, if you rotate it at a very high speed also, you can see that the free fall mechanism will not happen. Okay? So, um, that is why we should go by the manufacturer respect, um, the recommendation uh, with respect to the speed of rotation of the concrete mixer machine. Okay? So, you have different configurations uh, tilting type and non-tilting type. So, basically um, in this free fall tilting type um, the concrete mixers, you can see this kind of wheel arrangement you can see. Okay? So, with this wheel arrangement, you can change the angle of inclination of the drum. Okay? So, you can change the angle of inclination of the drum with this uh, wheel arrangement. Okay? So, that um, the helps you to tilt the drum. So, if you want to discharge the concrete, you can just tilt the drum, so that you can easily discharge the concrete. So, with the tilting mixer, you can see that the discharge rate will be faster. Okay? And another important thing to be noted is, you can um, the have a tilting hopper like this. This is called as tilting hopper. Okay. So, with the help of this, I can easily feed the material into the concrete mixer machine. Okay. So, this will also help you to speed up the process. You can easily load the drum with the tilting ho hopper, you can save the time. Okay. So, as I mentioned earlier, okay, the tilting mixers discharge concrete more rapidly than non-tilting. 
okay so particularly for the concrete the time is very critical okay once you prepare the concrete once you add the water to the cement what happens is cement will start the setting that's why uh, as early as possible we should uh, just place the concrete in the desired uh, position okay so that is very um, important with respect to um, the concrete and another important thing is it's a composite material it's made up of different um, the types of material like coarse aggregate fine aggregate and cement okay so if, when you leave the concrete undisturbed for some time what happens you can see that the heavier aggregate will settle down at the bottom okay so this is a kind of segregation okay the coarse aggregate will settle down at the bottom okay so um, then uh, if it settles down at the bottom you won't be able to have a homogeneous mix okay so that is why we should not waste time okay we should immediately once the concrete is made we should immediately discharge the concrete and um, to, uh, carry it to the desired place okay we should never waste the time in the preparation of the um, the concrete okay um that is why tilting mixer is very helpful because its discharge rate is very faster when compared to the non tilting mixer so the chances for segregation is less when you go for tilting mixers okay so tilting mixers um discharge concrete more rapidly and as i mentioned earlier you can either feed the material manually or with a tilting hopper okay as i showed you earlier this is the tilting hopper with this tilting hopper you can uh, easily speed up the loading process okay so we have wide ranges of um, drum sizes okay varying from 140 liters to 2800 liters accordingly the concrete output will also range from 4 to 90 meter cube of concrete per hour okay so depending upon your requirement you can choose the size of your drum okay so this um, schematic picture it shows how the angle of inclination of the drum can be changed from loading position to discharging position okay so by rotating the wheel you can change the angle of inclination of the drum so basically based upon the studies they have found that the drum axis should stay at 15 degree from the horizontal during the mixing during mixing it should stay at 15 degree to the horizontal okay so that is a, um, the desired um, the in angle of inclination with respect to horizontal during the mixing of your concrete so this is because one basic thing as you know already is if i keep the drum vertical okay so obviously your blade won't be able to lift the material so you cannot keep the drum vertical and do the mixing obviously you cannot also keep the drum completely horizontal okay if i uh, keep it completely horizontal with um, the 0 degree okay even that is not um, the possible this is because if it is completely horizontal what will happen is um the, your blades will, co will come in contact with more quantity of concrete in that case more energy is needed for lifting the entire concrete to the uh, full height um, the full diameter of the drum okay so the energy consumption is more that is why to optimize the energy consumption the preferred angle of inclination is 15 degree from the horizontal as established based on the studies so this is a commonly adopted um, angle of inclination and uh, while discharging as you know you can completely tilt the drum okay and the mixer drum speed which is recommended by the manufacturer is 18 to 20 rpm as i told you these drum mixers are based on free fall mechanism free fall mechanism so to enable the free fall mechanism you should not rotate it at a very high speed also if you rotate it at a high speed you won't be able to get the free fall mechanism okay so and also if you rotate it at a slow speed also your productivity will be less as well as you won't get a homogeneous mix okay so we should follow the speed prescribed by the manufacturer okay so the next is about the uh, free fall mixers non tilting type okay here i cannot change the angle of inclination of the drum you can see that the axis of the drum is always horizontal okay you cannot change the angle of inclination of the drum and commonly you can see this with two openings okay so one for feeding in the material and one for discharging the concrete out okay so this is a common configuration you can see for the non tilting type so you can discharge the concrete out by inserting a chute into it you can insert the chute into the opening and discharge the concrete generally for non tilting mixers you can see that the um the um, uh, cycle time will be more because discharging time is more in tilting type you can immediately discharge the concrete okay the time duration needed is less but here the time duration needed for discharging will be more that is why you can see that the cycle time will be more and the productivity of these mixers will be less relatively less when compared to tilting type okay so you can see there is another configuration where um the drum is reversible okay reversible drum if you rotate the drum in one direction 
uh, it will facilitate the entry of the material into the drum. If you rotate the drum in the opposite direction, it will facilitate the discharge of material out of the drum. Okay. So, that is called as reversible mixers. Okay. Reversible mixers are also available in the market. You can see, if you look into the inside of the drum, yeah, you can see that a spirally arranged blades are there fixed to the inside of the drum. Okay. So, you can see the spiral arrangement of blades, okay. the spiral arrangement of blades, okay. you can see the blade arrangement inside the drum. Okay. So, this spiral arrangement of blades inside the drum, okay, what it does is, uh, when you rotate the drum in one direction, it will pull the material inside. When you rotate the drum in the opposite direction, it will push the material outside. Okay. So, that is why, by reversing the, uh, the direction of rotation, I can discharge the concrete out. Okay, in this non tilting mixers. Okay. So, the discharge of concrete can be done by inserting the chute into the drum or by reversing the direction of the rotation of the drum. So, this is also um, th uh, one more configuration um, of non tilting reversible mixer. Okay. Here you can see there is only one opening. Okay. So, you can uh, feed in the material th with a um, th tilting hopper and you can just discharge the material outside by just rotating it in the opposite direction. Okay. So, these are also reversible mixers. Okay. When you rotate in the opposite direction, you can discharge the material out, because there will be spiral blade arrangement inside the drum, which facilitates um, the pulling in the material inside when you rotate in one direction and it will push out the material outside when you rotate in the opposite direction. Okay. Your RMC transit mixer, it is also an example of free fall non tilting reversible mixer. Okay. So, here also you can see there is only one opening. Okay. You have spiral blade arrangement inside. Okay. So, you have spiral blade arrangement inside. So, when you feed in the material, okay, you have to rotate in one direction. Okay. So, when you want to discharge the concrete out, you have to rotate in the opposite direction. Okay. So, these are reversible drum mixer as drum rotating in one direction for mixing and the direction of rotation is reversed while discharging. So, you can see the picture when the rotation is reversed the concrete gets discharged out. So, it is mainly because of the spiral blade arrangement inside the drum. So, so far we discussed about the free fall mixers. Okay. So, they are of different categories as we discussed tilting type non tilting, non tilting reversible type. Okay. So, different configurations are there. Now, let us move on to the next category that is power mixer. Okay. So, here the mechanism is different. Here you are not dependent upon the free fall of the material. Here we are dependent upon the rapid rotation. Okay. So, these mixer machines will be rotated at a very high speed. Okay. So, um, there will be some um, the paddles uh, fixed to the shaft inside the pan or the drum. Okay. So, these paddles will be rotating at a very high speed. Okay. That enables the rapid mixing and homogeneous mixing of the concrete. Okay. So, here you are going to mix the concrete by rapid rotary motion of the paddles inside the drum. Okay. So, this is uh, suitable for stiff and cohesive mixers. Okay. So, basically your free fall mixers as I told you, um, th uh, they need a slump of at least 50 mm. Um, th below that it will be very difficult for the mixer machine to handle that uh, stiff mix. But your power mixers can easily handle stiff and cohesive mixers. Very low slump also because of the rapid rotary motion of the paddles, you can easily mix it. Okay. So, the mixing time will be very shorter here and you have a greater productivity with the power mixers when compared to the free fall mixers. When you compare the, um, the power mixer with the free fall mixer of same size, you can see that the productivity of the power mixer is very high because of the rapid rotary motion of the paddles inside. Okay. So, different configurations are possible with this power mixer. You can go for pan or trough. Okay. We are going to see that. First, we are going to discuss about the pan mixer. Okay. It resembles the shape of a pan. You can see there is a vertical shaft here and the paddles are connected to the vertical shaft. Okay. So, um, the, because of the rapid rotary motion of these paddles, okay, so you can have a thorough homogeneous mixing of the concrete. Another important uh, thing to be noted with respect to the pan mixer is you have a blade kind of arrangement, blade or scraper attached to the inside of the drum. Okay, this is the one. 
Okay. So, this prevents the material from sticking to the side of the drum. Okay. This kind of arrangement we do not have it in the conventional drum mixer, okay. conventional free fall mixer whatever we discussed earlier we do not have this kind of arrangement. So, because of that um, the what is the major problem is when we make the initial trial mixes with the free fall drum mixer um, the what happens is um, the most of the paste will stick to the sides of the drum. So, the first mix will have um, less amount of paste and more amount of aggregate. So, either you have to throw away that batch okay. So, um, th that drawback is there or what you can do is you can go for this called as buttering operation. Buttering is nothing but you should go so for some trial mixes okay. You can just um, th initially before making your actual uh, concrete batch you just run a trial batch with a um, th mortar mix okay. So, you just run a trial batch so that the mortar mix will stick to the sides of the drum. So, when you do your actual batch then later you can see that the amount of material which is sticking to the sides of the drum will get reduced. Okay. So, this kind of buttering mechanism is needed because we do not have any blade or any arrangement um, in the conventional um, the drum free fall mixers to prevent the material from sticking to the side of the drum. Okay. But in your pan mixer you have this kind of arrangement. So, you have this blade which prevents the, um, the sticking of material to the sides of the drum. Okay. So, basically um, the, um, the paddles of the pan mixer are connected to the vertical shaft inside the pan shaped drum. Okay. You can see the paddles are connected to the vertical shaft. Okay. The feeding of the material will be through the top and the discharge you have a sliding trap at the base. You can discharge it through this um, the sliding trap at the base. Okay. To prevent the concrete from sticking to the sides of the drum scraper blades are provided. Okay. You can see the blade arrangement which prevents the material from sticking to the sides of the drum. So, here also you have different sizes um, varying from 140 to 2500 liters accordingly a concrete production rate will also vary from 4 to 100 meter cube per hour which is a very big pan mixes are also available which are used in um, batching plant and pre cast industries. Okay. If you go for a bigger size you can have a higher productivity. Okay. So, there are different configurations of the models available with respect to pan mixer. Okay. So, either drum will be fixed the paddles will be rotating or both the drums and the paddles will be rotating but in opposite direction. Okay. So, um, another popular model is planetary mixer. Why it is called as planetary mixer is it resembles the motion of planets around the sun. Your paddles will be rotating about its axis. You can see the paddles are rotating about its axis around the axis of the pan. Okay. Just like the planets which revolve around the sun, the planets rotate about its axis and then around the axis of the uh, sun. The same way these paddles are also rotating about its axis and around the axis of the pan. That is why it is called as a planetary mixer. So, by this kind of arrangement you can have a better intensity of mixing. Okay. So, the vertical shaft is rotary, the motion resembles the planets around the sun. Okay. That is why the intensity of mixing is very high in the planetary mixer. Okay. So, there are different configurations of pan mixer. Okay. As I told you, you can have the drum and paddles rotating in opposite direction or drum can be stationary and paddles can be rotating. So, different models are available. Okay. Now, we will discuss about the next um, the type of power mixer which is trough mixer. Okay. So, it resembles a trough shaped drum. Okay. So, you can see uh, the schematic um, picture of the trough mixer. If you can have a single shaft or double shaft trough mixer. The earlier pan mixer the shaft was vertical, but here you can see the shaft is horizontal. Okay. You have the horizontal arrangement of shaft. So, on the shaft you can see the paddles will be arranged spirally um, the along the shaft. Okay. The paddles are arranged spirally along the shaft. Okay. Either you can have paddle arrangement or you can even have a wave shaped arm arrangement. Okay. So, um, the, that will also give you better mixing. So, whenever you go for a twin shaft mixer you can see that the intensity of mixing will be very good because in the intersection zone you will have more amount of turbulence that results in good intensity of mixing. Okay. So, the other advantage of your um, the trough mixers is you can have different types of motions possible not only the rotary motion as well as the horizontal motion. Rotary and horizontal motion um, the results in a better intensity of mixing and homogeneous mix 
and the speed is very high. If you compare your uh, free fall, okay, if you compare your free fall mixer pan and the trough, you can see that trough will have the maximum productivity. Trough has the maximum productivity or the mixing time is very much shorter for the trough mixer when compared to pan and the free fall mixers. Okay. So, mostly in the RMC batching plant you can see this trough mixer, so that we can have a very high productivity. Okay. So, you have a horizontal shaft with paddles connected in spiral arrangement. The paddles will be arranged in spiral manner, I will show you a video there you will understand better. Okay. So, instead of paddles you can also have wave shaped mixing arms. So, as I told you there is a combination of rotary as well as horizontal motion which increases the mixing intensity and it results in shorter mixing time when compared to other types of mixer machines. Okay. So, another important thing we have to note here is the mixing duration. Okay. The mixing duration is very critical. Okay. We have to make sure we meet at least a minimum mixing duration as stipulated by the guidelines of the manufacturer. Okay. Um, this is because the mixing duration needed will vary for different types of uh, mixer machines your power mixer the mixing duration needed is lesser when compared to the free fall mixer and also the duration needed will vary with respect to the capacity of the mixer machine. Okay. So, what is the minimum mixing time needed is given in the codal guidelines in IS 4925 for different types of mixers, mixer machines and for different capacities of mixer machines. We should follow the guidelines. Okay. So, generally if you go for a lesser duration then what is needed what will happen you would not get a homogeneous mix that is the main problem. And if you go for a very high duration mixing duration also it is not good because as you know that as you add water to the concrete your cement starts setting. Okay. So, it will result in loss in water from the concrete due to evaporation that will affect your workability of a concrete. So, extended mixing duration is also not good with respect to the setting and the workability of the, um, the concrete. Okay. So, that is why there is an optimum mixing duration for every mixer machine. So, we should go with the manufacturer recommendation. Okay. Guidelines for um, minimum mixing time for each batch is given in the IS 4925. Okay. So, it will apply the, the mixing time actually starts after all the materials are added into the concrete mixer machine except the full quantity of water is added in the mixer drum. That means, if your mixing time starts counting after all the material uh, are added into the mixer machine other than the full quantity of water because commonly you can see that the, um, the water you add it in parts. Okay. This is because um, you may add some amount of water with the superplasticizer, we break it into um, the parts um, to because we add the water in stages uh, to avoid the loss in workability due to different reasons. Okay. So, um, that is why it is mentioned like this. So, after all the materials are added except the full quantity of water is added, your mixing time um, is taken into account. Okay. And another important thing you have to note here is all the mixing water should be introduced not later than one fourth of the mixing time has elapsed. That means, though you add the water in stages, okay, but entire mixing water should be added not later than one fourth of the mixing time has elapsed. This is the guideline available in IS 4925. Okay, we are supposed to follow the guidelines. So, this is what I told you. This table is available. Um, uh, it is taken from IS 4925, okay, which gives you the guideline for concrete batching and mixing. Okay. So, you can see that the mixing duration is given in um, the seconds. Okay. It varies uh, for different types of mixer machine. Okay. Say, for instance, if you go for non-tilting reversible drum type mixer, the mixing duration is more. Okay. Generally, for non-tilting mixer, it is more. Okay. Um, when compared to the uh, pan type mixer and the shaft type mixer, um, the you can see that the mixing duration is more for the non-tilting reversible uh, drum type mixer. Okay. So, similarly for different capacities of mixer machines, you can note on the minimum mixing time. This is the minimum mixing time given. Okay. We should never go below this. Okay. So, how to find the cycle time of the concrete mixer machine? In the earlier uh, lectures, we have determined the cycle time of different equipment. Okay. Now, similarly we have to find the cycle time of the concrete mixer machine also. Okay. So, what are the components of the cycle time of a uh, uh, concrete uh, mixer machine? Okay. So, it is nothing but your loading time, mixing time and discharging time. Okay. So, loading time depends whether you are going to manually feed in the material or you are going to use a 
um, the tilting hopper for feeding the material or you are going to use a belt conveyor for feeding the material. So, it depends upon what arrangement you have for loading the mixer machine accordingly your loading time will vary. Similarly, mixing time it depends upon the type of your mixer machine whether you are going for power mixer or you are going for free fall mixer or what is the capacity of your mixer machine all these things will govern your mixing time. Okay. Then the discharging time, so that also depends upon your type of your mixer machine whether it is going to be a tilting type or it is going to be a non tilting reversible type. Okay. So, all these things will affect your discharging time. So, you have to um, the, make the calculations according to your uh, actual equipment. So, the power mixers you can see that the, um, the productivity as I told you it is more when compared to free fall mixers 20 percent more cycles per hour when compared to your similar size free fall mixers. Okay. So, as I told you the mixer cycle time will depend upon your method of your loading and your type of your mixer machine and the size of your mixer machine. Now, how to calculate the productivity of your batch? Okay, generally, you know that concrete we always produce in batches, batch by batch we produce it. Okay. So, how to know the batch production in meter cube per hour? So, it depends upon your batch size and it depends upon your batch cycle time. Okay. So, batch size depends upon your drum size. Okay. So, we can never load the concrete to its full capacity, we cannot take the total volume of drum into account to determine the batch size. Okay. We generally take only the nominal capacity of the drum, that means we generally load the drum only to its two third or three fourth of the capacity only. Okay. There should be some space for mixing. Okay. So, we never load the drum to its fullest capacity. Okay. So, we are not interested in the total volume, so we are interested only in the nominal capacity of the drum that gives you your batch size. Okay. So, the drum volume means we normally represent the nominal capacity of the drum okay, which is different from the total volume of the drum. Okay. So, it refers to the maximum batch size of the mixer output. Okay. So, um, the, the maximum batch size is 2 third to 3 quarter of the total drum volume. Okay. So, you should you can take it as approximately 2 third to 3 quarters of the total drum volume. Okay. So, you know the batch size, you know the batch cycle time, how will you find the cycle time? it is nothing but your loading time, mixing time plus discharging time. So, for your particular concrete mixer what is the loading time, mixing time, discharging time you need to find it to know the batch time. Then the job efficiency, so here the job efficiency it depends upon your entire the equipment condition or the equipment operation. Okay. Say for example, for a batching plant you are going to find the batch productivity. Okay. Um, your job efficiency will depend upon the ability of your conveyor to feed into the material into the mixer machine. Okay. That is also important, that is an important factor affecting your efficiency. It also depends after the concrete is made, there should be a RMC transit mixer to uh, it should come readily and collect the concrete which is going to be discharged. Okay. So, there should be a RMC transit mixer which is readily available, availability of a RMC transit mixer that also affects your efficiency. Okay. So, all these factors are taken into account when you estimate the efficiency of the batch production. So, normally it will vary from 60 to 80 percent okay, depending upon the um, your uh, batching plant or depending upon your equipment condition or the, um, the operation method. Okay. So, let us work out a simple example on estimation of the um, the productivity of the concrete batching plant. Okay. So, um, a concrete batching plant with an average um, batching cycle time of 3 minutes. So, the cycle time is given to you um, directly 3 minutes, it includes the loading time, mixing time as well as the discharging time. Okay. So, it is having a batch, uh, batching chamber capacity of 10.7 meter cube. Okay. So, the capacity is given, the batch size is given. So, we normally refer to nominal capacity or the batch size only. Okay. It refers to the mixed quantity of concrete only. Okay. Okay. So, 10.7 meter cube is the capacity. Okay. So, what is the estimated batching production in meter cube per hour if the plant is running at an efficiency of 80 percent. So, the plant efficiency is also given as 80 percent. Okay. Now, you find the batch production. So, you know the batch size. Okay. So, the chamber capacity you can take it as a batch size obviously as you know generally the manufacturers never give you the total volume of the drum, they give you only the nominal capacity of the drum that will represent the batch size. 
Okay. So, that is actually 10.7 meter cube of concrete and you should know that here we are taking the concrete in a mixed condition, not in unmixed okay, because the volume will be different in mixed and unmixed condition. Okay. So, that is why in mixed condition only we normally represent 10.7 meter cube. Okay. So, the batch size is 10.7 meter cube into the efficiency is given as 80 percent divided by cycle time is 3 minutes. Okay. So, you convert it into hour, so 3 divided by 60. Okay. So, this gives me the batch production as 171.2 meter cube per hour. Okay. So, this is how you have to estimate your uh, productivity of the concrete batching process. Okay. So, now let us look into some general guidelines with respect to mixing of concrete. Okay. So, you should mix the concrete thoroughly as I told you until it is uniform in appearance. So, based on experience by looking at the color itself you can make a judgment whether the concrete quality is good or not okay, with all the ingredients evenly distributed. Okay, that homogeneous mix is very important. That is why I told you we should go for at least the minimum duration as prescribed by the manufacturer. You should never go below the minimum duration. Okay. Mixer should be never overloaded. If you overload it, the mixing will not be homogeneous and it should be operated at the speed for which they are designed. As I told you, free fall mixer or designed for a particular speed power mixers or design for a particular speed, you should go as prescribed by the manufacturer okay? and you should clean the concrete mixers immediately because if your blades are going to get coated with the hardened concrete, it is going to affect your mixing action. Okay? In many job sites, you can see that uh, blades with hardened concrete because the concrete mixers are not properly maintained, not properly cleaned after every uh, mixing process. Okay? So, you can see that the concrete might have hardened. Okay? So, that will also affect the mixing efficiency. Okay. So, once the concrete is made, you have to take the samples from different portions of the batch and you should check for the uniformity. For that also the codes um, are giving you the guidelines. Okay. You take the samples and check for the fresh density, check for the uh, air content, slump, coarse aggregate content, you do the sieve analysis and do the co uh, check the coarse aggregate content. This um, the difference between these samples should not be more. So, what is the, um, the permissible difference that limitation is given in the codal guidelines. You have to check for that to ensure the homogeneous mix. Okay. Okay. So, now we are going to discuss about the ready mix concrete. Okay. Nowadays, we are very commonly using the, um, the ready mix concrete particularly for, for works where the emphasis is more on the quality. Okay. We go for the ready mix concrete. Okay. So, ready mix concrete, there are two different ways by which you can make the ready mix concrete. I mean, these are the commonly adopted ways. One is truck mix and other one is central mix. Okay. As the name indicates, central mix means you are going to prepare the concrete in the central batching plant and the concrete will be brought to the job site in the transit mixer that is central mix. Then truck mix means you are going to prepare the concrete only inside the truck that is called as truck mix. So, what you will be doing in batching plant is in batching plant you will measure the ingredients accurately and then load it into the truck. Okay. And the actual preparation of the concrete will happen only inside the truck that is called as truck mix. Okay. So, generally when do we go for truck mix? Um, if your job site is located in a remote place like if your RMC transit mixer would not be able to reach the job site within the stipulated time as mentioned by the code. Okay. In that case, we can go for truck mix. So, in truck mix what they do is they do not add the water. Okay. So, only the ingredients are loaded, um, they do not add the water immediately. Okay. So, before the truck reaches the, um, the site, okay, on the way they will add the water and prepare the concrete and then um, th uh, deliver it at the required place. Okay. So, this kind of um, option is available particularly uh, where you can expect extended transit, okay, where the travel time is going to be is likely to be more. In that case, you go for truck mix, you do not add the water in the batching plant. Okay. You add the water on the way to the job site. As it nears the job site, you can just add the water and prepare the concrete. Okay. So, that is what is truck mix. Okay. Central mixing is done in stationary mixer at the plant and the mixed concrete is transported to the job site in haul units. Okay. Your truck mix concrete is batched um, at the plant. Okay. Only the batching you do at the plant and the truck mixes them to form the concrete. Actual mixing process happens in the truck only. That is called as truck mix concrete. So, when you compare the quality of a central mix and truck mix, obviously your central mix will give you a better quality. 
okay, because the mixing is done in a very efficient mixers in the central batching plant. Okay. So, that will give you a better quality, but this is only for certain uh, cases as I told you where the transit time is likely to be longer. Okay. In that case, uh, we can go for the truck mix. Okay. So, you can add the water at the plant or on the way to the job or after the truck reaches the job site that is also possible. See, in many cases you see that unexpectedly if your travel time is extended and if the concrete quality gets affected, obviously you know that with time uh, your co uh, concrete starts setting, your cement hydration will start and concrete starts setting. So, uh, as a, a concrete loses its workability, what they do is to um, the compensate the loss of workability as the machine reaches um, the job site, they simply add some amount of water and try to restore the slump. This is commonly um, the followed okay? and that is called as re-tempering of concrete, re-tempering, re-tempering of concrete. That means, you just simply add the water to just to recover your uh, lost slump. Okay? So, that will definitely affect your water to cement ratio and the strength and the durability of the concrete. Okay? That is why we should not do re-tempering. It is not advisable if you want to produce a good quality of the concrete. Instead, what we can do is, if you know that uh, the travel time is likely to be extended, you can uh, with, uh, withhold some amount of water. Okay? Do not add the entire water. After the, um, the mixer machine reaches the site, you can add the remaining amount of water and mix it and then um, the required slump. Okay, that is um, the better when compared to the, um, the re-tempering. Okay, so as I told you earlier, simply just if you don't, if you just add the water, what will happen? It will um, the definitely increase your water to cement ratio, and that will affect the strength. Okay, that's why re-tempering of concrete is not advisable. So this picture I have shown you already. So your truck mixers comes under the category of your free fall, okay, non-tilting, reversible type. Okay. So, you can see the spiral blades inside, if you rotate in one direction, it will pull the material inside which will facilitate the loading process. If you rotate in the opposite direction, the blades will push the material outside which will facilitate the discharging of the concrete. Okay. So, it has only one opening for both loading and discharge. Okay. So, if you are going for truck mix, truck mix in the sense, I am going to prepare the concrete inside the truck only. Okay. So, then there are some important guidelines to be noted. Okay, as you are going to prepare your concrete inside the truck only, okay, you should rotate at the speed of 20 to 22 rpm. Okay, then only you can get the homogeneous mix and um, um, you should rotate it for at least 100 revolutions at this particular speed. This will ensure homogeneous uh, mixing of concrete. Okay. So, after this 100 revolutions, then you can rotate at the speed of only 2 rpm. That is just to agitate the concrete so that you can prevent the slump loss and you can prevent the segregation. Okay. So, this transit mixer, the transit mixer can be used as an agitator or as a truck mixer. If you are using it as an agitator, the main function of the agitator is just to agitate the concrete and prevent the slump loss and the segregation. So, there you need a speed of only say 2 rpm, but if you are going to prepare the concrete only inside the truck, you have to rotate at a speed of 20 to um, 22 rpm for 100 revolutions. Okay? So, that is what is the manufacturer recommendation okay? So to get a homogeneous mix. So, generally when you use a transit mixer as an agitator, I can use more capacity of the, um, the truck uh, when I use it for preparing the concrete. Okay? Okay, so, important thing to be noted is the elapsed time from the introduction of the water to the concrete to the placement of concrete. That is very important with respect to concrete. The time is very critical because as I told you, once you add the water, the cement start hydrating, um, it starts stiffening, your, um, the setting will start. Okay? So, that is why there will be loss in workability during the transit. Okay? So, that is why we have to deliver the concrete within the stipulated time as given by the codal guidelines. Okay? So, according to the ASTM guidelines, it states that concrete must be completely discharged within a maximum um, of 1 hour 30 minutes. Within 1 hour 30 minutes, you have to completely um, discharge it, the concrete. So, your time is counted from the moment you add the water to the concrete making materials. Okay? So, till the placement time. If the transit time is going to be extended beyond this, then the concrete quality will be poor, you have to reject the concrete. Okay? So, um, the, that is why sometimes as I told you, when the time gets, um, unfortunately it gets extended, 
people try to retemper the concrete because they don't want to waste the concrete. They try to retemper it by adding some extra water, but will, that will definitely affect the quality of your concrete. Okay, so that is why for extended transit we can even go for uh, admixtures like uh, retarders. Okay, so there are certain special um, admixtures like retarders which are available, which helps uh, helps you to have extended transit time with the transit mixer. Okay, or you can even go for the truck mix where you can add the water towards uh, um, the end of your journey. Okay. So, truck mixers when operated as agitators, they can haul 20 percent more material than when used as mixers. That is what I told you. The same transit mixer, I can just use it as an agitator or I can use it as a truck mixer for preparing the concrete. Okay. If I use it as an agitator, I can handle 20 percent more material. Okay. I can use 20 percent more capacity than when used as a truck mixer machine. Okay. So, there are several ways of ordering your um, ready mix concrete. Okay. So, let us look into the different ways of ordering. So, one is the recipe concrete, other one is your performance batch and the third one is your part performance and part recipe. Recipe concrete in the sense you have the concrete producer and you have the purchaser. Okay. So, in the recipe concrete the purchaser will give you the complete mix proportions. Okay. He will give the complete mix proportions to the producer. Okay. He will tell this much quantity of cement, this much quantity of aggregate and this much quantity of water, the entire mix proportion is given. The only responsibility of the producer is to do the proper batching of this material um, in his batching plant and prepare the concrete in a, uh, under strict quality control and deliver it in the, the job site. So, that is the only responsibility of the producer. So, the entire responsibility of the strength and the durability is taken care by the purchaser who is doing the mix proportioning in the recipe batch process in the recipe concrete method. Okay. There is another method called as performance batch. In performance batch, okay, the purchaser will tell what is the strength needed. Okay. So, what is the performance needed? What is the strength needed? Okay. What is the durability needed? Okay. In which exposure condition the structure is going to be put into? Okay, it should be resistant to sulphate attack, resistant to chloride attack. Okay. So, what is the durability requirement, what is the strength requirement or given by the purchaser to the producer. Okay. So, he just mentions only the performance requirement. Okay. We mention only about the performance requirement, the producer will do the mix proportioning. Okay. The producer will decide the mix proportioning. So, he takes the responsibility of the strength and the durability. The producer takes the responsibility of strength and durability in the performance batch. Okay. And the third one is part performance and part recipe, where both of them have their roles in the mix proportioning. That means, your uh, purchaser, he can even give suggestions on say this is the type of cement needed, okay, type of cement. He can give some recommendations or admixtures to be used okay. and he, he can even say at least use this much amount of cement, minimum cement requirement. Okay. So, these guidelines the purchaser can give. In addition, the producer will design the remaining uh, mix proportions. He will design the remaining mix proportions. Okay. So, both are participating in the mix proportioning. So, that will always result in a more economical mix. Okay. So, the third approach is often preferred because it ensures maximum durability and flexibility to supply the most economical mixture. Okay. So, this is the one which is more commonly preferred part performance and part recipe. That means, both the producer and the purchaser should participate in the mix proportioning. Okay. They should give their input. So, this picture shows a schematic uh, image of the batching plant, okay, concrete batching plant. Okay. So, you can see um, th these are the aggregate um, storage bins. You can see with sloping slides. These are the aggregate storage bins where the aggregates are stored. Okay. So, from here the aggregates will be conveyed by the bell conveyor. Um, okay. So, the bell conveyor will take it to the concrete mixer machine. Okay. So, nowadays due to advancement of technology, we have lot of aggregate storage bins with uh, different types of sensors like weighing sensors, okay, weighing sensors, moisture content sensors, moisture determination sensors. Okay, moisture content determination sensors. Okay. So, there are different sensors available which are provided in the uh, aggregate storage bins. Okay. So, that will facilitate you to measure the required quantity of aggregate there itself 
and the measured quantity will be conveyed by the conveyor directly to the mixer machine. So, that is also possible. Okay. So, the moisture content will also be determined accordingly the adjustments in the weight of the aggregates will be done uh, automatically. Okay. So, everything is now under the PC control. Okay. So, you have a, um, the computer control cabin where you can control the entire system. Okay. So, here you can see um, the aggregates are taken uh, with the help of the bell conveyor to the, um, the uh, if the uh, aggregates are not going to be weighed here, you need a separate weighing vessel here to measure the weight of the aggregate before um, the adding it to the mixer machine. Similarly, these are the cement silos. Okay. From the cement silos, the cement will be taken uh, with uh, screw conveyors into the, um, the cement weighing vessel and then it will be transferred to the mixer machine. Okay. Okay, so, this is a real uh, picture of the, um, the batching plant. You can see the uh, aggregate storage bins. Okay, these are the aggregate storage bins. Okay, so, you have the bell conveyors to transfer, you have the mixer machine. Okay, you have the cement silos. Okay. So, the material is conveyed with the, um, the bell conveyors to the uh, mixer machine where the mixing is done. So, we have different configurations of the batching plant. You can also have a um, small batching plant, mobile uh, uh, compact plant depending upon your requirement. You can see a small um, the cement silo, aggregate storage bins and the, um, the mixer machine. Okay. So, depending upon your job requirements, you can have a small batching plant also. So, as I told you, if your project site is very far away from the RMC batching plant, it is preferable to have your own batching plant at your uh, job site. Okay. That will make the process more economical. Okay. Now, let us watch a video how the concrete is manufactured in the concrete batching plant. So, this is an animated um, video. Okay. So, you can see that um, these are the aggregate storage bins. So, this is your cement silo. Okay. You can see the cement silo. Okay. So, your cement from the cement truck is being pumped into the cement silos. Okay. So, the cement silos are filled with the cement. Now, the cement from the cement silos is conveyed by the screw conveyor. You can see this. By the screw conveyor, it is being conveyed um, into the weighing hopper. Okay. You just weigh the required quantity of the cement before um, loading it into the mixer machine. So, you can see your front end loader used for charging the aggregate bins. It is loading the aggregate into the aggregate bins. These are the aggregate storage bins. So, at the bottom of the aggregate storage bins, as I told you, nowadays we have weighing sensors. You can have the control over the amount of the material which is being conveyed by the conveyor to the mixer machine. Okay. So, the batched aggregate will be transferred to this hopper and then um, the material will be delivered into the mixer machine. Okay. So, the material is now delivered into the concrete mixer machine. So, now you are mixing your admixture uh, with water. Okay. And you can see the cement is being discharged into the mixer machine. Even the water is also added into the mixer machine. So, everything is added now into the mixer machine. So, this is a, a twin shaft concrete mixer as we discussed earlier. You can see horizontal shaft and the paddles are arranged spirally. Okay. You can see spiral arrangement of paddles along the shaft of the mixer. Okay. So, this spiral arrangement helps you to, um, to have a homogeneous um, the mixing of the material. Okay. So, uh, once the concrete is mixed, you can see that it will be delivered into the hopper of the RMC transit mixer. Okay. So, now we have come to the end of this lecture. Let me summarize what we have discussed so far. So, we have discussed about different types of concrete mixer machines, um, the free fall mixers and the power mixers. Um, I told you like um, the power mixers can give you a better productivity when compared to the free fall mixers. The mixing output of the power mixers is about 50 to 100 percent higher than the same size free fall mixer. That is why we always use the power mixers in the batching plant in the precast industries, so that we can have a higher productivity. Okay. So, this um, RMC concrete either you can make it at the batching plant or you can prepare the concrete inside the truck mixer. 
So, if you are going to prepare the concrete inside your truck, that is um, the, for the truck mixer, the speed you are supposed to follow is 20 to 22 rpm for a total of 100 revolutions. Okay? So, this will um, to ensure that homogeneous mixing of concrete will be done. So, if you are going to prepare your concrete in your transit mixer, okay? so in that case, the truck should be rotated at a speed of 20 to 22 rpm for a total of 100 revolutions. After that, you can rotate it at a speed of only 2 rpm for just agitation to prevent segregation and the slump loss during the transit. Okay? So, if you are going to use your transit mixers as agitators, it can handle 20 percent more material than when used as um, the truck mixer. Okay? And uh, which should always uh, keep in mind that the time is very critical uh, in the concrete making process. So, ASTM states that concrete must be completely discharged within maximum of 1 hour 30 minutes. Okay? From the moment you add the water for preparing the concrete and the moment you discharge the concrete, the time interval um, the permissible is only 1 hour 30 minutes. That is a maximum limit allowed. Okay? So, accordingly only you have to make the choice of the uh, whether to go for the ready mix concrete or not. So, de depending upon the distance between your job site location and the RMC batching plant, okay, we have to plan whether it is possible to deliver the concrete within this particular time duration. Okay? Accordingly, you have to make a decision. So, these are the references which I have used for this um, to lecture preparation. In the next lecture, we will be um, to discussing about um, the different methods of handling the concrete, transporting the concrete and what are all the different methods available for consolidating the concrete and um, the curing of concrete. Okay? So, the remaining steps involved in the production of the concrete will be discussed in the next lecture. Thank you.